welcome to the mystical land that is Joanna Land. I am your host, Joanna Dryling, and I am beyond excited to be on this journey of transformation over a lifetime with you. This is a space dedicated to your highest evolution and our collective igniting a deeper humanhood. Let's roll, baby. Welcome to Joanna Land and this week's episode of the podcast. I'm your host, Joanna Dryling, and I'm so excited to get into today's topic because it is huh, so real, so alive, and so, like, I can't even tell you. It has been the work, the, like, primary work of my life this year. <laughs> And I really just wanted to take a moment to talk about it because it is so important. It is so innately important. And we are talking about a disease, an epidemic that is sweeping specifically the United States, especially as a result of the overconsumption culture that we see via the interwebs, buying all this stuff on the Amazons and all the Targets and the little treats and we're not knocking the little treats we love the little treats but let me tell you <sighs> lord have mercy i'm very passionate about this topic let me tell you that one of the biggest the biggest epidemic not the biggest but one of the biggest epidemics that i see for us humans on the world in the world specifically women more so than men i see this happen with is chronic overspending. And let me tell you what, that on an energetic level, chronic overspending on a long-term basis will eventually in your body manifest as disease because if you are overspending financially, you are overspending physically and in a whole bunch of other places in your life. For years now, I've wanted to come on and have a conversation around debt and talking about my debt journey and plenty of other things <laughs> in that realm. And I'm going to continue, I'm going to like, I think do a whole podcast episode around debt, but something that I've realized within debt, which is like how I know if you're overspending in financially, you are overspending elsewhere is that with debt, every bit of financial debt that I have is directly connected to some emotional debt and some spiritual debt that I be racking up, okay? And yes, it is a result of overspending. <laughs> and guess what I was also doing was overspending elsewhere in my life, creating these cycles of debt and not just the physical debt of financial debt, of like being indebted to the bank. Nine times out of 10, and I know this to be true on a very like large basis, just in my own lived experience, is that nine times out of 10, our overspending is coming from our unworthiness wound. And our overspending, we are spending in order to fill that wound, to heal that wound, to band-aid that wound, it also is giving us a buy high and a, a little bit of dopamine. And half the time when we're overspending from that unconscious place and we are disconnected and disembodied because that's all overspending is, is disembodied spending, okay? Let's like get something very clear that overspending is just disembodied spending. Because if you were embodied, you wouldn't buy the thing that you don't really need because you already would have the high that you're looking for. Or you would figure out another way to attain the high. But the reality is, is that so often we're making purchases in order to feel a certain feeling, in order to like fill a certain hole. And then we find ourselves not even wanting the thing anymore like we feel, because we felt fulfilled by the actual purchase the original, just the buy, like that's all we needed was the high from the buy. We didn't even need like the actual product or whatever the thing was. And our chronic overspending, it's, you know, not unlike, think about it like time. 
Like all of us only have 24 hours in a day and all of us are out here doing a whole bunch of things. Like I, you know, I mean, it's wild. Some like what I see some people do in 24 hours. The reality is, is that most people are like, I don't have time to do this. I don't have time to do that. Okay. Well, if you stopped scrolling on TikTok for two hours a day or stopped watching three episodes of that Netflix show, guess what you could probably do with that time. And like, you can also use the logic that that's me relaxing, but scrolling is not relaxing. And escaping into another reality is also not necessarily inherently relaxing. So inherently by like doing those, so like we have the time, we just aren't allocating our time properly. And I can bet you that you probably actually have the money to do all the things that you want to do with your life, but you're misallocating the money because you all, you're, because you're misallocating the money, okay? And like, putting it places and you're spending money you don't have because you are unconsciously disembodied purchasing because you're trying to fill a hole and damn it, credit cards exist in the United States. Here's the thing, he, part of the reason, and I kind of talked about this earlier, part of the reason that a lot of us are also chronically overspending is because there is this huge, huge, and it was bad, but it is so bad now, y'all. Like, I don't think anybody realizes it's really how bad this is. <laughs> like, I don't know if anybody else is paying attention to the world like this, but like, um, oh my gosh, the pressure and the innate, like overwhelming um, overconsumption is like thrown in our faces. And like, I think countries are defined by particular values. And the United States, in my opinion, is, you know, uh, on its shadow side, really just embodies convenience. And, um, oh my gosh, really just embodies convenience and consumerism, and generally over consumerism. And they're like, oh my gosh, the TikToks, the TikToks. It's, yeah, and like, the, I, so again, taking it back to the time example, you probably have the time to do the things as being misallocated. So like you probably have the money to do all the things that you wanna do, but you are instead spending it on useless makeup and other things. If makeup is your thing, I'm not knocking makeup being your thing, but we don't need like almost a makeup store full of makeup in our own homes because the reality is, is that we're never going to use all of those products before they actually get, before they expire. So then we end up wasting them anyways, which contributes to the waste issue that we've got in the world. But guess what would solve the waste issue is less consumption. Less waste happens when there's less consumption. It's a simple math equation. Um, and so it's like the same thing with our spending, kind of. Um, but it's like... Yeah, that we like, that uh, basically like, I feel like we, because we are in this place of unconscious spending, we kind of in the disembodied spending, as we're purchasing, we're not processing that this is a purchase that I in fact want, that like you just might just be going out and spending just to, once again, fill the hole. But like, what are you actually filling with that? Um, I'm going off the rails now. I am so going off the rails. Let me reiterate in some different words that part of the issue with overspending in our country is the overconsumption being thrown in our faces on a regular basis and the keeping up with the Joneses type scenario that our society, in particular the United States society, like really, really embodies. And let's talk about how inner, how overspending affects your energetic body. If you're constantly overspending your energy, let's say you're not sleeping that much, let's say, and like you are burnt out, what have you done? If you're burnt out, you've overspent your energy and your life force energy. So if you are overspending your money, Money is energy. Money is inherently like a nothing, actually. We give it all this meaning. And 
if we are chronically overspending our money, like, like the money has to come from somewhere, right? So it's either coming from our bank account and our paycheck or however we make our money or from a credit card. So at any rate, like, again, you have the money, it's probably being misallocated and you're probably spending in a whole bunch of places that you really shouldn't be spending because they don't actually align with your values. And, and like, if we are chronically spending on and investing our life force energy, that is not our life force energy. I don't really think money is our life force energy by any means, but I do believe that our wealth exists inside of our body and our energy is an aspect of our wealth, our inner wealth. And so inherently, if it is an aspect of our inner wealth, our life force energy is an aspect of our inner wealth. If we are constantly overspending in our outer wealth, we will eventually deteriorate the energetic body because we are overspending the energy because we don't have it. Because, or like, LOL, I keep saying that we do have it, but it's like, you're, because you're like, you know, you're like, I get this visual of like pulling from a pail. There's like, you know, there's nothing else. It's not an endless pit, you know? It's like, it's going to come from somewhere. And where do you think it's going to come from is your own being half the time. So that's why I say like, yes, like this is a epidemic inside of our world, but it will eventually lead in disease because it will wear at our energetic body and our energetic body is connected to our actual physical body. And so if there's disease in the energetic body, like overspending, and I do actually believe that overspending is a fucking disease. And I am, I'm ridding myself of that disease. Do it because it causes dis-ease in the energetic body. It is disease because it is disease of the energetic body. Because we are like, because it is disease. And so eventually, if it's happening in the energetic body, it will happen in the physical body. And I'm not saying like you're gonna go get sick like tomorrow, but I'm but the long-term effects of long-term overspending will deteriorate you. Period. And I speak that from personal experience because I have a lot of debt and I feel the weight of that debt on a daily basis in my body not and in my energetic body i feel that right and so like we just have to y'all i just i'm gonna wrap it up <laughs> we have to and i will talk about this more because i am so passionate about it i'm learning more because i really have healed my overspending but i've also healed my worthiness wound this year on a tenfold like i'm not trying to go out and purchase all these different things just to trip, fill this hole and i've done financial fasts that have shown me that that is what like has happened and i've talked about the financial fasts that i've done before on the podcast and this month i did one again rocked it did a fantastic job like an unofficial one but wow like it's so fascinating because like when you pull in your spending like that it becomes so clean when we you tighten your i say pull in i say tighten i mean like i mean tighten like you just are spending like on gas and money and the bare essentials and not anything outside of your needs and like and i mean needs and not wants and desires and like your other hobbies and stuff like that but when you pull back all of that spending your patterns and the habitual things that have happened become you become more aware of them and you become conscious of them then you go back into spending and you become painfully aware and conscious of it i bought one thing for myself this month which is a little like mocktail mixer type situation and i bought a gift for my partner and a gift for my dad and they were all in the same thing and it was the only frivolous purchase I've made all month long and I felt so 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 guilty about it it was so funny because me a year ago me two years ago especially two years ago wouldn't have batted a fucking eye about that not at all two years but guess what I'm doing this year is paying off the debt of 2022 Joanna who you know thoughtlessly made all those choices because guess what she was doing living so disembodied yeah so all that to say that 
If you have a chronic overspending problem and you are constantly wondering where in the world all of your money is going, first go back and look at where it is going. Stop avoiding your bank account and look at where you are spending. Because if you are not aware of where you are spending, you cannot, re you cannot adjust the habits. That's also why I suggest the financial fast is because without going back and looking at your expenses and what you have spent on, which I'm like, please, for the love of all that is holy, stop avoiding your bank account, everybody. Like, get intimate with your bank account, please. God bless. Um, because your overspending comes from you not looking at your bank account, by the way. Your overspending comes from your own avoidance of your bank account. So go back, look at all your expenses, but if you didn't, the nice thing to do, and if you don't want to, which I kind of understand on a certain basis, but I also recommend the financial fast because it's not a matter of going and looking back at the old expenses. You just start with where you are now and like take a month or whatever you want to set intention for to be so peeled back on your spending that it makes you painfully aware of where you probably have been spending and overspending, okay? So I'll leave it at that. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. I hope you loved it. If you did, like, subscribe, follow, do all of the things. And I would love, love, love to hear your biggest takeaway in the comments or wherever you watch this video slash podcast, whatever, um, because I love talking to you about what you took away from this. I love hearing from you guys and I love being in connection with everybody in this community. So until next time, I love you. Totally lost that train of thought. Damn. Um, LOL. Hashtag ADHD. Like, the thought came in. I actually tried to fish and finish my sentence and be a good speaker. And then I lost the other train of thought. <gasps> we got it. We got it.